once again for the Kwame Brown Chronicle News. Strap in, get ready. I've got an exciting ride for you once again. Tonight's topic, Will Smith. The slap that was heard around the world. Well, what I wanted to do, guys, today with this was um, revisit it now that we've all had a chance to kind of cool down a little bit. Um, everybody, everybody in the world, um, you know, bashed this guy. And I think we've all been there. If you live long enough, if you have um, had any success in your life, you know that people are just waiting for you to do something and be human for a second. Um, I think that it's possible that you could be on a stage so much that you could get so comfortable that it's like being in a in a bar. You see what I'm saying? Um, I don't know. You know, that's just like with me. Um, I've been in situations where people would be like, I'm uncomfortable with this. This doesn't seem like something. For instance, I'll give you a perfect example. Um, I was a tennis coach um, for 20 years. Okay? Professional certified tennis coach. Right? Um, I also played professional tennis too. So I was used to being around certain situations that most black people wouldn't be able to handle. Especially a guy like me. Like, I'm, I'm a real. I'm real. You know what I'm saying? I'm not. I'm not a house nigger or anything like that. I'm not Fox News, nothing like that. Straight up, you know, I am I was born in the Bronx, raised in the Swats in Atlanta. I just, my parents just pushed me out there. You know, they said, go get it. You know what I mean? And I just went and got it. But my thing is, you know, after my tennis career, you know, I played a little professional, played at the U.S. Open, been in front of 30,000 people. You see what I mean? At 17. Okay. So I, 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 I have experienced what Will Smith was going through. Now, at 17, did I feel comfortable at the at um, the U.S. Open in front of 30,000 people? No. But what if I did that for 30 years? How, how comfortable would I be? Hmm? See, this is another perspective a lot of people haven't really looked at. These guys are used to being on the stage. They're on the stage all the time. Him walking up there wasn't like us walking up there. And I want you guys to, to think about that. Because, like, for me, for instance, right, first time I went to a club, right, my mind was blown, right? I see all these people dancing, the music, the women, everything, right? Now, after I've gone to the club for a few years, right, after I'm, after I'm the old man in the club, right, it's nothing. You don't even really hear the music, right? It ain't really nothing to you, right? And so, I think that could have had something to do with why, why Will Smith did that. I think he's so used to being on such a big stage. Because people were saying, like, how could you do that on such a big stage? He's always on a big stage. <laughs> you see what I mean? That shit ain't nothing for him. That was just a couple steps away. He wasn't thinking, I'm walking up on a stage. He wasn't, I don't think his mind was thinking like that. I really don't. Anyway, let's listen to it raw. Let's listen to it raw. Take it in after some time has been passed, you know, has passed by. And let's see what we think now. You know who's got the hardest job tonight? Javier Bardem and his wife are both nominated. Now, if she loses, he can't win. That's a pretty lady right there. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty lady. Wins. Like, please, Lord. Jada, I love you. G.I. Jane 2, can't wait to see it. All right? <laughs> <laughs> this, that, was a, that was a nice one. Okay. I'm out here. Uh-oh, Richard. <laughs> see how fast he got up there? Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> Yo, yo, hold on, hold on. You see how fast he got up there? You don't walk up on those stage that damn fast unless you've been up on them a lot. You see what I mean? That wasn't nothing but a walk to the bathroom for him. You see what I mean? 
I don't think he really was taking it in like we were. We was like, how the hell could he do it there, right? Like, take it to the back somewhere. That is the back for him. That ain't shit. They put that nigga in the front row. Okay? He's used to that shit. Us sitting in the front row, we'd be like, oh, God, I don't even want to be. You'd be surprised. You get put in certain situations like that, you won't want to be there. They're used to that shit. This is nothing for them. Now, even after seeing that and me trying to take up for them, it was still fucked up. You can't do that, even if you are comfortable. And, you know, like, um, nah, you can't do that. Nope. I'll tell you an example. I, I used to coach, like, after after my tennis career, I coached. And I would be sometimes in front of 14, 15, sometimes 20, 20 white women, right? They all got on tennis skirts, um, fine as hell, because they always exercise, stay at home, and eat salad, right? I'm the only black man out there, 9.30 at night in Georgia, North Georgia, not Atlanta, okay? I'm up in the suburbs. Get out of there. And, <laughs> sorry about that. And so, I'm out, oh, that's the good part right there. So, <laughs> so... Um, I'm out there at night, sometimes up to 20 women, you know, multiple courts. I'm the only guy out there, only black man within a hundred miles. Okay. That situation at first, when I first, the first time I did something like that, it was overwhelming. It, it literally overwhelmed me. It took me years to the point where I was out there after a while, after 20 years, I'm out there yelling at them. I'm mad at them because they didn't practice their serve or whatever it was or they didn't do what they were supposed to do in the match. I'm out there talking to them just like this because I had become so comfortable. And if any other black man had walked up, they would have said, what in God's name has happened? I ain't never seen no nigga out there doing something like this in front of white people. Where are their husbands? You see what I mean? I was put in those kind of positions. White women running around with little skirts on showing me their panties every five minutes. You see what I'm saying? And it was nothing to me. It was nothing. And they could they could tell that it was nothing. And, and that's what I think a lot of those celebrities probably were feeling when he went up there. They was just like, he did that shit because he's just so fucking comfortable. He got too comfortable. You see what I mean? So, was it fucked up? Yeah, it was still fucked up. I mean, I'm trying to take up for the brother. And this, I revisited this today because it, it hit my soul. And I said, I'm just going to see what it what I think. And I'm looking at it for the first time, too. I'm not, this isn't me, you know. All right? So, let's go on. We. I kind of excused him for that, right? Okay. I'm trying to take up for you, Will. Out your fucking mouth. This nigga don't never be taking up for me. And niggas, all he want to do is roast the fuck out of me every day. Talking about my, my dog and my video game down in my basement and shit. I'm a big old bus. But, you know, he, he just said something about this nigga. One, one day before the day. It's been two goddamn years. This nigga just... And every time I got him over my mouth, this nigga always got a video on about me. Wow, dude. Yeah. It was a G.I. Jane jump. That's a pretty girl right like there. Name out your fucking mouth. I'm going to, okay? She looked at that nigga oh, like no, I can, oh, okay. Hold on, wait a second. I'm a, this is that this is good. what I mean by you've been on this stage so much that shit like this shit like this gets normal. I want you guys to watch the lady behind Will Smith. She's, she's listening to him like they at fucking dinner. And the person across from the table was about to say something. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. 
too comfortable. Watch. <laughs> I can, oh, okay. That was a greatest night. Much respect to his, um, Chris Rock, though. The way he handled okay. that. Once again, nigga got too comfortable, right? He should have been up there whooping some ass, right? He should have been. He should have been whooping some ass, right? Am I right? It was now a watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch the way she looks. Look. Wow. Oh, what do you have to say, sir? What do you have it to say about that? He just yelled that shit right next to her. She's just like, whatever. I'm going to. Okay. Look. She's just like, whatever. What's Chris going to say now? Okay. So that was. That was a. That was fucked up. Greatest night in the history. That was. Television. Yep, that was fuck. That was the greatest. It was, you know, my thing is, it was the the slap was bad. You know what he should have done? I think, I think he should have yelled out, "Keep my wife's name out your motherfucking mouth first, right? Then waited for Chris to say one more thing." Everybody would have excused that shit. You see what I mean? He should have said, keep my wife's out, name out your motherfucking mouth, right? Do a little nigga on the end, too. That would have really, really set it off, right? And then, Chris Rock should have said, look, man, it's just a G.I. Jane joke. You know, I wasn't meaning to, you know, offend Jade or anything. Then he storms up on the stage. Then he storms up on the stage. <clears throat> Did it in reverse. Anyway, worst moment for Will Smith still stands. I can't excuse it, Will. Um, you're my favorite actor, man. Um, I know you never see this video, but I'm actually kind of making this video for you. Um, I think that, um, that we're put here for a reason. And I want to get into this next video, too. Um, the, the best moment, um, I feel that Will Smith had on, um, on screen. But I, I really do feel like we're put here for a reason. And a lot of people always take that as like a positive thing. But believe it or not, if you came back, if you believe in reincarnation, and you got reincarnated a million times, right? After a while, you wouldn't you wouldn't keep asking God to send you back to be um the richest man in the world, believe it or not. Believe it or not, after a while, after 10 million times being reincarnated, 20 million times, believe it or not, you might even ask God, you might even tell God you want to know what it feels like to be poor. Mm-hmm. Yep. You might even ask God, um, you want to know, after you've asked him, like you want to gain everything, right? You do that 20 million times. You want to be the biz biggest actor in the world, right? You do that 20, 30 million times in reincarnation. After that, after that, though, after a while, you might ask him, well, what would it feel like to, to become the, the biggest star in Hollywood and lose it all? What, what would that experience be like? Because that's what we're here to do is experience things. You know what I mean? But then that's just on a deeper level. I don't, I don't know if you guys can follow that. Like, subscribe. You're not getting this anywhere. Anyway, um, best moment. Best moment for Will Smith ever on screen right here. It's right here. This thing right here almost brings tears to my eyes every time I watch it. This thing right here is just, I mean, I had a great dad. How, how often do you hear a black man say that? I had a great dad. Now, was he, he was he kind of a maniac? Kind of. He just, he wanted me to succeed so bad. And, and, and for his dream to actually come to fruition, it's amazing. 
especially for me to do it in a sport like tennis. You know what I'm saying? And and to go through all the losing I had to go through, all the racism. When I was a child, and I started playing t- tournaments when I was about 9 or 10 here in Georgia, okay? When I'd go to the tournaments, they would always have a draw set for me to play the number one seed. Every time. Every single time. And they knew it was a black guy because I had an African name. And, um... My dad, I, you know, my dad would tell me, look, you know, I go out there, the little white boy would kill me, right? Because I'm playing the number one seed. So I never got a chance to get into the tournaments. I would always get knocked out first round because I'm playing the best player in the tournament, right? Well, my dad didn't hit. He wasn't hearing that shit. He was like, look, I don't give a goddamn who they get put put out in front of you. If you wasn't, if, if you wasn't going to win the tournament anyway, if you didn't beat him, so you might as well beat him first. Get your ass back out on that court and practice. And eventually, you already know what happened. I started beating the number one seed, and guess what? The rest of the tournament, I was cruising. You see what I mean? I cruised all the way through the, through the tournament because I already beat the number one seed. Until what? You already know. I became the number one seed. And that's what that's what, you know... I love about this movie, Pursuit of Happiness. If you haven't seen it, make sure you see it. I'm not going to spoil it for you. Just wanna, this is just one of my lovely scenes here. Um, it's a true story, actually, too. I'm going pro! Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know. You know, uh, you'll probably be about as good as I was. That's kind of the way it works, you know, and I, I, I was below average. You know, so, whoa. So you'll probably ultimately rank somewhere around there, you know. So really, you'll excel at a lot of things, just not this. I don't want you out here shooting this ball around all day and night, all right? All right. Okay? All right, go ahead. somebody tell you you can't do something not even me all right you got a dream you got to protect it people can't do something themselves they want to tell you you can't do it hear that Kwame you want something go get it Period. 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 Ain't nothing else to say. Just go get it. So, anyway, I wanted to um, end this video, and I want to say, you know, you know, the way the world works, you know, we really don't know how it works. You know what I mean? And so... You never know. Will Smith might just see this. You know, I hope he does. You know what I mean? I, I hope he does. So anyway, um, we'll ride out, ride out. Um, another edition of the news for you guys tonight. I, I really enjoy doing these little clips like this. Um, I really enjoy um, doing this because... What it's allowing me to do is branch out, bring you guys the content that you want, that you that you need, to keep you entertained. You my one and only desire. I'm Ramo Red Track, and I'm out. Your body made me wanna cry. Liar. My baby girl, she on a flight though. She gonna be here tonight though. You turning me 
into a liar. You got me so on fire.